The Dexcom G7, I have been wearing it for over six months now, and I've got so much to say about it. I'm Justin, welcome to Diabet Tech. On here, I talk all things diabetes tech, news, management, and tips. I've got a podcast every Monday and videos dropping every other Friday, sometimes every Friday, it depends. The Dexcom G7 has been an incredible continuous glucose monitor to use, and I'm super excited to tell you all about my experience with it, the ups and the downs compared a little bit to the Dexcom G6, even the Libre 3, which I've worn. These are all continuous glucose monitors. And also, the big news about the G7 is that compatibility with other automated insulin delivery systems, Tandem's T-Slim, their Mobi pump that's coming out, and Omnipod 5, maybe Beta Bionics, these pumps will eventually or will soon work with the Dexcom G7. Specifically, Tandems, T-Slim, and Moby, those are slated to work with the Dexcom G7 this fall. We still need to see if that actually materializes, but it's very exciting for those users. Omnipod 5 doesn't have a date yet. Uh, it may not be early 2024, considering their iPhone app is coming out and it's gonna work with the G6, and that's slated for 2024. Um, anyway, I have so much to say about the G7, and we should probably get into that. Uh, if you wind up enjoying this video, definitely give it a like and subscribe to this channel and click that bell for alerts if you wanna see more videos of mine when they drop. A couple things, I am a Dexcom warrior. I work with Dexcom on sponsored projects, really fun ones. Uh, but that has had no impact on my review. What I'm gonna say, I'm gonna tell you exactly how it is. These are my opinions, my beliefs. They've had no impact in this. I have that written in my contracts because it's super important that I don't have a bias in these videos. Also, I am not a doctor. This is not medical advice. This is simply my experience. If you want to make changes to your plan, your healthcare, make sure you talk to your providers, your physicians before you do so. Let's get into this video. Today's episode is sponsored by SugarPixel, the CGM reading display. More on that in a bit. I already put out an initial review after using the G7 for a month. So if you have any lingering questions or wanna hear some other things I had to say when I first started using it, that's a great video to check out. I'll put it down in the description as well as up there. Uh, I've also put out content on the Libre 3 if you wanna see more about how the two compare, the Libre 3 and the G7. Those are the two leading continuous glucose monitors uh, besides the Eversense, which is a whole other class because that's implantable. Let me start with the build of the Dexcom G7, how it feels. It is so small. I mean, it's through the shirt right now. You can kind of see it if I go like that. There you go. It is so freaking small, I forget it. It's that it's there. I sometimes even forget like where on my body it is. I have to search for it, no joke. I really have to do that. For me, it stays on the full 10 days with the out, without the included overlay patch. Now Dexcom says that that is mandatory to use. I don't use it and I don't need it. Everyone's skin is different though. Not everyone's gonna have the same experiences that I do, um, but I, work out three to five days a week. I sweat a bit. I go swimming. This summer I went swimming a fair amount and it stayed on. Maybe by day eight, it started coming off along the edges, but I'd say, let's say 90% of the time, my Dexcom G7 stayed on the full 10 days and for the grace period, which I'll get into in just a bit. Now let's get into like kind of putting it on. So I've been putting this thing on for nearly eight months. I know the video says six months. It just sounds better. In the eight months, I've had one, maybe two, hurt when I put it on. Besides that, every single other one has been completely painless. It's amazing. And I think that it's just the angle. It goes in at a 90 degree angle instead of a 45 degree angle like the G6. There's something about the angle and the shortness of the actual uh, piece that goes into your skin. It just doesn't hit muscle anymore. This device is technically only approved in the US for behind the arm. In Europe, it's also approved on the abdomen. I've used it all over the abdomen and on my arms. It's worked fantastic for me. My readings look good. I'll get into data and consistency in just a bit. But overall, I found that all these different areas on me work better. Now, door frames are still an issue with the G7. That's not gonna go away, I think, for anything that's external door frames. I mean like car door frames also, like you open the door, you turn around to go say something to someone and it like gets ripped off. 
that happens, but that's user error. One product I really like to use to keep my Dexcoms on if I do notice them kind of coming off a little bit is the skin grip adhesive. The, the ones for the G7 are like so adorably cute and so colorful. Um, I'll put a link to those in the description. They're pretty inexpensive and they last me a long time because it's rare that I need to use one, but when I do, I have it on me. I bring maybe a couple on trips, especially when I'm going swimming on these trips, if they're tropical or whatever, I'll bring a few, you know, cause I wanna make sure they match my outfits too. What I found to be the most interesting with the G7 is the fact that you can stack sensors, right? So Dexcom, because they have to say this because of the FDA, they say 30 minute warm up, which is true. When you put on the sensor, there is a 30 minute warm up, but there's also a grace period on your older sensor for 12 hours. And during that grace period, sometimes I put on a new G7 and let that warm up in those 30 minutes. Then once it's done warming up, I deactivate the old one, I activate the new one, and I literally didn't even go without readings, not for a second. That's been incredible. I did a whole video on how that works on here. So if you wanna learn more about that, I'll put that video up there and down in the description. Now, interestingly, because you can stack sensors, there's kind of this glitch that gave me a peek into how consistent and accurate the G7 data is. So when you have an older sensor on, you put on a new one and they're on at the same time. Once the new one is done warming up and if you just keep them both on for some time, when you deactivate the older one, you will see a graph with these two numbers side by side on the app. I don't know if it's necessarily supposed to happen, but it does. This is what the graph looked like when I did it. And as you can see, the rises and the falls, they're very, very consistent. Yeah, there may be some difference between the actual readings, but ultimately what we're reading these sensors for is to know how quickly we're rising and falling. And so that our automated systems, if we're on one, those pumps, know how much insulin to give you or pull back. Today's video sponsor is from one of my favorite devices and that is Sugar Pixel. I've also got one back there. This LED display uses Wi-Fi to connect to continuous glucose monitors to display blood sugar levels. Sugar Pixel gets readings from Dexcom G6, G7, Freestyle Libre 3, or Night Scout and can display and alert for up to two CGM users. You can set a ton of different screens from a big glucose reading, the rate of change, emojis with messages, an entire screen color or more. Along the bottom, it even shows you how many minutes are left until your next reading. SugarPixel also has optional audio alerts, which can be configured on the Bluetooth app. There's a snooze button right on top. Every device comes with a vibrating puck that can be placed under your sheets, which is great for those who are hard of hearing. On the app, you can set target ranges, alerts, display screens, screen brightness, and night mode and quiet hours for when alerts won't go off. To learn more about Sugar Pixel and grab one for yourself, check out that link in the description. Back to the episode. For me, accuracy has not been an issue. Like I said, I've worn these for eight months and I've had nearly no inaccuracies. I've definitely had some moments where I like was higher than I my device said or a little bit lower, but I never noticed like a super inaccurate low or high. There had to have been some, right? But the fact that I can't pull out a ton just goes to show that the accuracy has overall been pretty consistent. Now, as you can see, I don't have many bad things to say about the G7, but connection issues, that is most definitely an issue here. I've experienced, I think, older models of the G7 and newer models of the G7. Let me start with the older models. There are older models of the G7 that are circulating that have very poor connection issues. And I mentioned this in my one month review too, but I think I've had a wider scope now. The connection issues can sometimes be so bad that my phone is in my right pocket, my sensor's on my left pocket, and there's a brief sensor issue. And the brief sensor issue is not so brief. This tends to happen, if I have a bad sensor, it happens a lot. If I have a good sensor, I don't notice it at all or it never happens. Um, but the bad ones are very noticeable. I haven't noticed them really ruin my automated system, but sometimes they have. Here are a few graphs where you can see just like how spotty looking these graphs are. And 
specifically, I think that the sensor that I'm showing here was like day five or day six. Like it was so bad, I, I wound up taking it off and putting on a new one. I called Dexcom support, I let them know of the issue and they sent me one. Like Dexcom support, I mean, if you have Dexcom, like you know, they're just incredible. And if you're not utilizing them, utilize them. They will send you new sensors if you have any issues, if they come off too soon or you're just having connectivity issues. Now, let's talk about the new sensors. I kind of got into it. They work way better. Uh, I don't have brief sensor issues, but what I do have are connection issues from distances. So Dexcom claims that this has the same, I believe 35 foot distance, which is like the Bluetooth maximum distance for connection. That's how your phone talks to your Dexcom. I no longer can go into my living room and leave my phone in my bedroom. I'll get disconnected. But that is something that I was able to do with my Dexcom G6. And what I was able to do with the Libre 3, which I wore for a while, I reviewed that on here as well. That's a major issue. I mean, it's a major issue in the sense that you may just forget that your phone is in your room and you're running around the house. Um, and also, we don't always want to have our phones on us. Like, I mean, also, what if you're showering and then you're getting ready for the day? You're not wearing shorts yet. You're wearing a towel. I have noticed I'll go 20 to 40 minutes disconnected from Dexcom accidentally just because my phone's in the other room. This is something that Dexcom needs to work on. I reached out to Dexcom for comment and this is what they said. Quote, over time, we will introduce software and hardware enhancements for Dexcom G7 designed to support a wide range of product improvements, including extended wear time and improved connectivity. While some improvements are already in the market, others will be released in the future. Let's get into secondary devices for the Dexcom G7. As you can see behind me, I've got some cool devices. There's the sugar pixel on top. Uh, that one is a device that was made for showing glucose numbers. That's connected to my G7. It was so easy. It also works with the G6 and Libre sensors. Very easy to set up. There's a bunch of different screens. Then below that is the Tidbit. The Tidbit was not designed for showing your glucose numbers. It has a bunch of infographics like train times and sports game scores and the weather and just fun screens, but it's open source. They allow people to build apps for it. And that one was built uh, by a user. I actually interviewed him on the podcast. He tells us all about how that works. Anyway, that's also pretty easy to set up. There is There are a few more steps to do it. And if you want to learn more about that, I've got that podcast episode. I'll also put out a video that explains how to set that one up because there's just some steps, but it's really not that difficult. Now, most importantly, there is the Apple Watch app. I'm not wearing an Apple Watch these days, but the Dexcom G7 has an Apple Watch app. It looks great, it's easy to use. There's a Dexcom widget that can sit right on the home screen that updates. Um, and then when you tap it, it opens up the app. Dexcom G7, just like the G6, can also be uh, followed on the Follow app. Um, and that's been fantastic. Now let's get into some settings, uh, specifically alert settings on the G7 that have been pretty amazing to use. First, there's delay first alert. This is a setting where you can set a number, basically this wall number, like let's say 190. That's actually what I have it set on. And you can also set an amount of time that you won't get alerted for that first alert. So I set it to 190, I set that to 15 minutes. So if my glucose numbers go over 190, but then drop back down below 190, in under 15 minutes, I won't get an alert. That has been one of the most amazing settings on this device that you don't get on the G6, the Libre 3, because I can live in the moment. I don't even know that I went high for a moment, but I did, and I don't get that alert. There's another one. Let's say your, your numbers stay high, right? Um, and you get that first alert. There's a snooze option. When you turn this on, you can set an amount of time to delay your next alert for a certain period of time after you acknowledge that first alert. I have this set to 30 minutes. So 15 minutes go by. If I'm still over 190, I get an alert. Then 30 minutes go by, I'll get another alert. This is of course, if my, sh my readings stay higher. So these were built into it in order to allow you to live in the moment more in case there's nothing to worry about. Cause you know those times when you're 
192, 188, and you just get alert after alert after alert because you're just sticking there or you're just sticking there for 20 minutes. You go back down. That's what you have with the G6, right? That goes away with the G7 in so many circumstances. Now, there are a couple other modes. There's vibrate mode. This is such a great feature for when you're in a movie, at a Broadway show. Uh, that's how I'm using it. You turn all of your alerts to vibrate. You just tap that on. I believe it can set, be set up to four or six hours. Can't remember off the top of my head. That's been amazing. I put my phone in my pocket and I'll get a vibrate uh, if there's an issue. There's also the ability to silence all alerts. And this includes urgent lows and sensor failures. I think the best opportunity to use this is when you have a low, maybe even uh, you know 60, a, a pretty significant low and you address it, you have a ton of snacks. You can silence those lows for up to six hours, including all other alerts. I'm a bit apprehensive of using that setting. It kind of just scares me a bit. I'd be curious to hear if that setting is weird to you. So let me know in the comments. Um, and also if you are a G7 user, what would you say is your favorite setting? Maybe I'm missing one. Let us know in the comments because I want people to know um, if they are using the G7, like what setting they should look for, or if they're G6, what setting they should look forward to. And I think one of my favorite things about the G7 is the fact that I am looping. I have a closed loop system with the Dexcom G7 and my Omnipod DashPod because I'm using DIY loop. And it's been working fantastic for eight months. I've been looping with the G7, which a lot of people can't say. And then let's talk about the future of the G7. One of the most uh, asked for features is direct to Apple Watch. I spoke to the CEO at ADA in June. That interview is live on this channel. He said that that is coming this year. When that comes out, I'm totally gonna make a video about it on here and I'm sure I'll make some social content as well. Now, a big announcement that Dexcom made was that the Dexcom G6 will be discontinued. And that has scared a lot of people who don't want the G7, tried the G7, didn't like it. Let me just, a piece of advice for people who tried the G7 or who are apprehensive about what they've heard, give it some time. I think that I was so hyper aware of the G7 when I started it, that for the first month, I was so critical of the numbers and comparing them to my glucose meter. But after eight months, I feel like it's done wonders and the data is accurate. And if it's not, I have no I have no idea that it's not because it's, it's still regulating my sugar numbers. and. I'm overall, the last 90 days, 82% in range. I've had 86% in range for those 90 days during these eight months. So the G7, it's working for me and I'm, I'd am i be willing to say it, it would work for most people. So, and for Dexcom to be discontinuing the G6, they don't wanna ruin their company, right? That, like they are confident that the G7 will work for everyone. Besides that, Tandem, has the G7 probably coming first to their systems alongside the Libre 2 also. They're gonna have that closed loop with those two sensors on their T-Slim, their Moby. I've done videos on the Moby. It's the world's smallest tube pump. It's so interesting. It's on this channel if you wanna learn more. Omnipod 5, I don't know when that's gonna come, maybe like mid to late 2024, so you're gonna have to wait a bit longer. Um, but yeah, I hope you learned a ton about the Dexcom G7. I know that it's been such a helpful device for me. I love using it. I compared it to the Libre 3, which I also loved the Libre 3. And if the Libre 3 comes to closed loop, I would consider it. We'll see what happens there. If you have any questions about the G7, let me know in the comments. If you're a G7 user and you have comments about it, let us know as well. Let's start this dialogue, this conversation. Um, and if you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe to this channel and you can click that bell for alerts. That way you know as soon as my videos drop because like I said, videos come out every Friday, every other Friday, but like I may go back to every Friday or like I'm gonna sporadically do every Friday. And then every Monday though, podcast on here and on podcast platforms. Uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm Justin, and I'll take you later.